Hello and welcome to QTV's This Morning Program. I am your host, General Sonko, and I'm joined by my co-host, Ibrahim Abalde. But it seems you are here with a difference today. Absolutely. We are here again. <laughs> yes. And that was great. It's great to bask. Great to bask. Um, so, you know, when the spirit is high, yes. you know, to bask comes with its different feeling. Yeah. So... That's why today I'm back in the studio yeah. this way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you very much, Jenna. Yeah, so thank how did you spend the Tobaski in general? How was the fest for you, considering COVID and all of that? Jenna, well, alhamdulillah, um, although considering the fact that I've been very careful with my family, yes. you know, we had a good time. Um, it was a very good time at home, you know, and I took my family out, we went to Q City, okay. we had fun, mm -hmm. you know, then to uh, take them back home, I took them back home, so it was very good. It I was very, very good. Very good to watch. Okay, as mm. for me, the first day I spent it cooking, in fact, I cooked breakfast and I cooked um, 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 lunch. I know haters will say I did not cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes. I wouldn't deny that. Yes. Because I, uh, from, from the look of things, yes. I understand that you love cooking. I love to cook, and in fact, I'm yeah, a good so. cook, but I know some will say that it's not possible. Mm. So if you are just joining this program for the first time, this is QTV's This Morning program coming your way from Monday to Thursday at 10 a.m. Just to take you through what we have for you today. Yes. So today we have the newspaper review, but unfortunately, we do not have a lot of newspapers here because of the Eid. I think some of these papers will be releasing tomorrow instead of today because of the Eid, unfortunately. Exactly. But still, we'll be taking a look at news around town to talk about, and we have Mr. Esa and Jai up political science lecturer at the University of the Gamma to help us answer these questions. We also have on social issues. QTV story leads to relief for community. We have um, a guest called Mohammed F. Jabi to help us talk about this from the Khadija Foundation. We also have Keeping Fit segment. We have footage from Q City. You ate a lot of meat, so we'll be giving you the chance to exercise with us to be able to know some of the exercise routines that you can use to, to, to digest a lot of meat from the Tobaski. We also have Diaspora Voice. Um, how Gambian celebrated it in the USA by Awanjai. I think this is the first time we're having diaspora voices mm. since we started this particular program. We also have um, the entertainment segment by Skeng Man Suizi yes. to take us through what is happening in the world of entertainment. Exactly. So this is what we have for you in this edition of QTV's This Morning program. We will take a short commercial break. When we come back, we will take you through the news that we have today. And our guest, Mr. Njai, is here with us to help us analyze what we have so far. The best product in town is back, QCell's MiFi router. Get the best MiFi in the country for just $2,800 and connect up to 15 users with 4G internet speeds and a long-lasting battery life. So rush now to any of our customer care locations and get the best for less while stocks last. For more info, call our customer care on 111. QCell, Senior Boss, the Gambia's quality network. We innovate, others follow. Step into the future of television with sleek and slim design Samsung Smart TVs. Ranging in size from 32 to 75 inches and in different technology. Smart LED Crystal UHD Ultra High Definition and QLED Quantum Dot LED. Get new ways of interacting with your TV as our TVs offer an unparalleled vision adventure from the comfort of your living room. Ultra viewing angle, powerful picture quality, web browser, gallery, Earthnet LAN, Wireless LAN built-in, Bluetooth, screen mirroring technology, mobile on TV mirroring, built-in voice assistance, Wi-Fi direct. Not only that, our TVs are backed with 12 months warranty and we are currently on a promotion. Contact us on 333-3217. Welcome back, viewers, from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV's This Morning program, and I am joined uh, by my co-host, Ibrahim Abalde. So like I mentioned, today we don't have a lot of papers here to offer because we're just from a public holiday, obviously. So I think print media, they're also taking a break. They're relaxing. Yes. So I think um, I just contacted Point, I guess, and they to told me that they'll be producing starting from tomorrow. 
anyway yeah. it's yeah. important they need to rest as well Definitely. it's understandable yeah. let's talk about olympics um gambia's gina bass the poor olympian goes for gold in tokyo thank you so much for joining us mr njai on this particular program gina bass to start with i think it's the best thing to start with on a on a, on a thursday morning <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much um gina ba, and thank you ibrahim for having me here um it's it's great um tobaski it's always a nice feeling. Mm. Um, I think you've both shared how you spend your Tabaski, so it will be fair for me to also share. You're right <laughs> about that, though. You're right about that. <laughs> yeah, um, so <coughs> um, this year was kind of refreshing. Yeah. Because last year, Tabaski, I was it around. Mm. I was in the Gambia, and you know how it feels um, when you're away from home on mm. such social events. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, so it can be so boring out there. So this year, at least, you know, the, the, you know, the meat and all that, no, the yeah. social... Yeah socialization and all that, I mean, that was so refreshing. Mm. And I'm like, I'm back to the Gambia, to the normal Tabaski. Yeah. How I used to spend Tabaski. And I spend with family, normally I'm always home. Mm. Um, yeah, it was only yesterday that I went to visit some family members. Mm. Yeah, and Alhamdulillah for you the know, fact that we witnessed that this year as well. That makes it very good. That yeah. makes it look good. I mean, sharing with your family. Exactly, and that's the best part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I understand that it is different from uh, most parts of the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite different. I mean, you're always in your room. <laughs> you have nowhere to go. But then, Alhamdulillah, in Gambia, you can always interact with family, yeah. friends, and loved ones. It's great. And that feeling. Like yeah, but, but how mm. did you deal with the COVID having to be outside of the Gambia? I know it must have been difficult. We've shared a lot of stories on QTV in relation to how Gambians have been dealing with the COVID in other countries. How did you deal with it? Yeah, I mean, it was it was difficult, especially um, both the um, Koriti and Tobaski, um, for the fact that, like in the UK at the time, um, there was a lockdown, mm -hmm. and then Koriti, there was no, in fact, um, I mean, congregation prayers. Yes. But Tobaski, there was, but then there, it was really, really controlled. Mm -hmm. In a small mosque where just five, ten people have to enter their yes. prayer, and then another badge has to come. Yeah. You know, you have to go with your face mask. Um, you have to go with, you know, your own mat, mm. you know. So, but in Gambia, it's different. Yeah. I, even though the restrictions are there right now, people are advised to, I mean, abide by the COVID protocols. Um, in the mosque, this time around, in Talinding, we decentralize it. Oh. Instead of having a larger gathering because of COVID and also the rain, the imam, being so progressive-minded, decided that, well, let's decentralize. Mm. Normally, we do that. Yes. It's very difficult to have that in other communities. I mean... But in Talinding, that's what we did. Some prayed at the Talinding Islamic Institute, some prayed at the Maid Mosque, some prayed somewhere else. So that was, you know, that was also part of, I mean, trying to respect the COVID protocols yeah, exactly. and it really helped. I, some I with their face masks. Yeah, one. yeah and yeah. I even um, saw some people talk about the fact that they didn't go to mm. the mosque. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So most people, yes, especially didn't. those that have been very careful, yes. you know, they, don't, they didn't go to the mosque. Oh, those yeah, who yeah, yeah. are yeah. exposed. In Lamen, I mm. mean, the same thing applies. So yeah. they decentralized the Eid prayer. Okay. So I think that's, that's a, a smart, good one. We've been yeah, very that's careful. That's a smart one. Yes. So moving on, let's talk about Gina Bass. Gina Bass, the poor Olympian, goes for gold in total. Tokyo. I mean, it has been a success story for her. I mean, Gina has been doing uh, wonders um, for the Gambia, yeah. I can say, because <laughs> she's not only doing this for herself, I think she's doing it for country. Um, she has been on the headlines um, globally, one can say, and it's really good that Gambia, we celebrate our own. Yeah. Um, I always say this, you know, we only celebrate people in the Gambia when they are normal. But I think it's, it's good that, you know, we are celebrating Gina, and yeah. I think it should go beyond that. Because um, I'm not a keen follower of, um, of sports, yeah. but I know that Gina has been doing wonders. And I think she's, 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 um, she's the first part Gambian, for instance, to achieve, you know, to make such achievements um, in, in the area of athletics. Mm. So it's really great that we, you know, we're seeing Gina going. Mm. I think the last time I saw this also on the media, yeah. um, she's, going for, she's going to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great that we, you know, we pray for her, we try to support her morally, you know, spiritually, any way we can yeah. to make sure that, um, you know, glory is brought to the Gambia because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, she's representing the Gambia, sure. she's not representing Gina Bass. Mm -hmm. When she goes there, it's her name, Gina Bass, written, but then it's Gambia that is also attached to it. Yeah. So if Gina succeeds, it's the Gambia that succeeds. Yeah. I mean, a small country like the Gambia having someone to compete at the international level. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing. And it tells a lot about the country that, I mean, in, in, in global affairs or in, in world politics today, there is no small states. States are also trying to contribute in different ways because, sta I mean, states contribute, you know, to global events in different ways. Some, it might be political might, some it might be military, some it might be economy, mm -hmm. some it might be sports. That is the, 
and we call it comparative advantage. That is the little that they have to offer, and then that you know takes them to, to, to that level at the international level. So I think Gina is doing a great job for the Gambia, and this has commendation. For me, that. basically, I, I don't have a problem with all that. I know Gina is trying. Mm -hmm. She's doing very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to push her. Mm -hmm. But the headline, mm -hmm. Jenaba, poor athlete. I mean, exactly. what is wrong with it? So there is something wrong with the headline. Yeah. So <laughs> the poor Olympian. Do you think she should be addressed like this? I mean, that is, that is um, derogatory, mm. I will say. Um, and obviously, like I said, but then you have to also understand that these are, these are terms that are mostly associated with people that are from countries that are considered less developed, mm. countries that are considered underdeveloped. Mm. I mean, if you look at even derogatory terms like third wall, these are, these are archaic, people are not allowed to use this. But then, I mean, these are, these are Western powers who sat down somewhere after the Cold War and said we have the first wall, those mm -hmm. are the countries that are aligned to the West and they follow the capitalist um, economic system. The second wall are the communist countries aligned mm -hmm. to the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And the third wall are the African countries and yeah. the rest of us in the underdeveloped part of the world. So because you're from the Gambia, considered to be part of the third wall or underdeveloped, and then you address us poor, but it's, it's very unfair. And then I think, you know, the honors will lie on Gina now to prove them wrong, that yeah. I'm, not, I'm not actually poor. And I think she's going to do that. Yeah, exactly. she might. But uh, like I always say, the question in the situation is, what can we do as a country mm -hmm. to make sure there's another Gina Bass? We have Gina Bass now. Mm -hmm. But what does it take to make sure that we have a lot of Gina Bass in future so that this trend can continue? For exactly. me, that is it. That exactly. is what I say all the time. As a person, when you get to win an award, ask yourself, what can you do to make sure that there are a lot of other young people who will come after you? So as a country, how can we ensure this? I think it has to do with utilizing our talents, mm -hmm. making sure that young people are given the opportunity to explore their talents. Um, it's very sad in this country that... Um, all that we do or we think young people can do is just to be in the classroom, you know, learn ABC, learn physics, mathematics, journalism, law, medicine, and just go and just sit in the offices at the end of the day and be working. But I think countries are, in the 21st century, countries are developing not only through education, for yeah. instance, the formal education system that we see. I mean, it, 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 people are, countries are trying to utilize yeah. sports, for instance. Young people, people can be talented in different areas. Not everybody can sit in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And the Gambia, that is our main problem. That is why I, I always link this to the problem of education in this country. Yeah. Our education system is a problem. Mm -hmm. It does not teach you to be, to be versatile, to, to choose which path you want to follow. Sure. For instance, you talk to your parents, even your parents might tell you that, no, you have to study law or you have to do that. Because yes. we think these are the lucrative areas. Mm -hmm. But today, what Lionel Messi or, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo or the late, um, what is the, atle um, the basketball player in the U.S. who died just last year, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what they earn is a million times more than yes. what a lawyer or a doctor mm -hmm. or a, a journalist earns it's, in the Gambia yes. or somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the country does not only develop relying on only one part, mm -hmm. that is to say, through the formal education system. We also have to utilize our... Um, our, our, our other areas like sports, for instance, where we can produce these talents. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there are people today who are not contributing meaningfully to the development of this country because they feel that they have been, they have been kind of stifled They've at one place that they, they, want to, they, they have a part that they want to follow and they're not given that opportunity. Our society, our education system is not creating that opportunity for them. So I think um, someone like Gina Bass for us to produce that, um, and in fact more than yes. Gina Bass, because yeah. that's what we should be looking yes. for. Yes. I mean, it has to do with us trying to create the right environment. Yes. You see, people talk about empowering people, empowering people. You don't empower people. You create the environment, the so avenue people. for them, mm -hmm. for them to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what we are lacking in this country. But believe me, if, if these opportunities are created for people to, you know, explore their talents, mm -hmm. utilize their talents in different areas, Gambia will be at another level in the next yes. I, I, uh, The Gambia, we should not struggle. I mean, people like Gina Bass, I mean, representing the Gambia, look at her just putting on the Gambia, yeah. you know, on her shirt. Mm. I, I like that. I feel very proud to see Gambia yes. on her. Mm -hmm. um, like he said, yeah. it is Gambia, not it's Gina Gambia. Bass. This is Gambia, Gina not yeah. Gina Bass. And there was a time, Gina Bass, I saw something circulating on social media, yeah. go for me for Gina Bass yes. to go to Tokyo. Mm. You know, what do you think? I, I think the, the, the people responsible for this, they should provide all these funds because yeah. they can't say these funds are not catered for. Yeah, but they I are funds specially 
cater for this. Exactly. But I think a clarification was made in relation to starting a GoFundMe for Gina Bass. It mm. was in that the government did not support Gina, but mm. this was just done by an individual who just wanted the whole country to put money together just to support Gina Bass. Mm. So I think a clarification was done in relation to that. You, they just wanted Gambians yes, to contribute for Gina, support but her. actually I think the government as well did their part. I think a clarification came out mm. in relation to this in fact. Mm. But I think it's not a bad mm. idea mm. that mm. Gambians open a GoFundMe at some point just to that, support that, Gina. That's a good one. Yes, but a before one. Gambians do that, mm. the government should step in. As you yes. said, the mm. government have already you yes. know, contributed. Yeah. So mm. it's not a bad idea, idea. anyway. Yeah. So if the government did not do it and the people are to do it, so that's becomes that's a the problem. That's the bad, sad yes. part that, of it. I think the government um, that, that contributed a about um, $600,000 in which Gina got about 200000 So I think um, Mumudu Gajaga of QTB did a story mm. in relation to that um, recently. But we are wishing Gina Bass good luck. Yeah. I think um, she will do it for us. At the end She's of the time, it. the victory is ours. The victory yes, is ours. Yes, She's yes, done it in yes. other countries. So mm. we're looking forward to see what Gina Bass and the other Olympians have to offer. Mm. But I'm very, very optimistic. Good luck to them. We, we are with you. So moving on, um, we have Gambia's largest onion buyer at the beginning of July. So Gambia, actually, we, 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 we tend to import um, onions a lot. That is what this particular report is talking about. Mm. Something that a lot of people might argue we can do locally. But mm. we import, we, we even import vegetables at some point. Vegetables that we can locally grow here. Mm. So what do you think in relation to the, what strategies or policies can, can we put in place as, as a country to make sure that some of these things we get to grow locally and eat locally? I mean, <coughs> these are problems and then it has to do with um, for me, where, where I always talk about this is it has to do with um, lack of believing in ourselves mm. and also utilizing what we have. Um, you see, the world is interconnected. It's a globalized world. It's a globalized community. And people, obviously, will have to survive. Mm. And then what the, the, the Western powers, for instance, are doing, outside countries are doing, especially towards Africa, is to how to how, how to how to control us in different ways. It's not only in, in the area of education, mm -hmm. it's not only in the area of technology, you know, but it's also in the area of food. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that are produced in the Gambia, I mean anything that is Western or that is foreign is considered good. Mm -hmm. And anything that is local mm -hmm. is considered bad. It's considered not modernized. Mm -hmm. Because our modernization has taken us to not only, as I said, in the of education or culture, but also even in the type, the type of food that we eat yeah. today. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things that we eat in this country are imported. I mean, and so what, what beats my imagination is a lot of them are expensive as well. Mm. Things that we produce in this country are even expensive, um, unaffordable for an average Gambian. So like I always say, um, it has to do with also the mindset. Mm -hmm. um, people tend to believe that anything that is coming from outside is good for us. Mm. But I think many of the health complications that we have today also owe it today to the type of food that we eat. Mm. I mean, we have no idea what these foods are made of mm. and what are the ingredients that are used to make these type of food, and then we try to eat them. Uh, and sometimes they have health complications for us. When it comes to the issue of onion, I think, like I said earlier, we import a lot of things. And it's important that um, yeah. as Gambians, so we I try think, to... So I think, Mr. Njai, looking at the graph currently in front of us, mm -hmm. Gambia is the highest buyer at the beginning of July, looking at it. And uh, these are things that we can locally grow. Yeah. So as yeah. a, you know, you, you are a political science lecturer. You guys deal with policies and concepts here and there. Mm -hmm. So what policies do you think we can put in place, deliberate policies, to make sure that at least this figure drops, even if we are not um, totally growing growing it here and locally, how can we make sure this gets to drop to an extent that we can be, you know, independent at some point? Because this is too dependent, what I'm seeing in front of me right now. I mean, you see, always when we, when we talk about these things, it, okay, like you said, we, uh, we deal with politics, policies and all that, and it's very difficult to, you know, detach politics from this. It has to do with also those at the helm of affairs responsible mm -hmm. for policy matters in the country. I mean, onion is not something that Gambians should be importing, for mm. instance. We grow onion in this country. We know of Karafi used to be in Kafuta, you know, growing onions and potatoes there. And then I think the solution to this is to make sure that the state take ownership of some of these things. Mm. See, sometimes people will say that um, communism is a cake, is in the dust and uh, trash can, or socialism is a cake. The state cannot control the economy. 
the state does not necessarily control the economy in for instance in the welfare system what we what the state does is to regulate the state does not have a, a complete hand in the economy or in the market to control what comes in and what comes goes out but the state is there to regulate some of these things and i think what can be done is to encourage gambians for instance to grow some of these things that we that we consume here a lot especially when it comes to onion and it's sad that the price of onion always goes up like for instance um I think three, four months ago, you know, the bag of uh, um, onion used to be like 500 or 600 dollars, I can't remember. And now we're talking about 900 dollars or more. And then it's like it, there's no control mechanism even in the market, how these things are, are sold, what price they are sold. At the end of the day, you know, the average Gambian continues to suffer because these are things sometimes that we produce in this country. But at the end of the day, they're expensive for an average Gambian who earns a salary of $2,000 or $1,500. How do you expect them to survive? Mm -hmm. So the state must take charge at some point. All these things cannot be left in the hands of private individuals to deal with because at the end of the day, these are capitalists. These are people that are in, in for profit maximization. Mm -hmm. So the state must take charge to make sure that these things are regulated. How do we encourage our young, our farmers, for instance, you know, our onion growers, our potato growers, our gardeners, especially women who are continuing to struggle in the in the provinces, for instance, trying to grow some of these things, mm -hmm. what in incentives are provided for them? How do they make sure that when after growing these things, these things are bought, for instance, at a, at a very good price mm -hmm. that women will not uh, consider the burden of transportation, yeah. what they storage. spend, storage mm -hmm. and all that, and bring them to the combos and sell them? Obviously, when these things are expensive, you know, it's, it's going to be, I mean, the, the, when the cost is expensive for the growers, it's going to be also be expensive for the consumers. Mm -hmm. So the government or the state must come in to regulate some of these things. And that is what works in welfare states um, in the 21st century. And I think that is really going to be good for the Gambia if we can do that. We have the land. We have all it takes for us to be uh, food sufficient. I mean, mm -hmm. But the problem is, um, how can we change that notion? I mean... Most people think, like you mentioned, anything that has to, that comes from the West or outside, mm -hmm. it's better than the one that we do here. Yeah. Yes. So what do you think? How can we change that? I mean, I always make reference to Jamis um, Vision 20. Uh, tw this is Vision 2016, or mm. 20, I think it was Vision 2016, mm -hmm. when um, he wanted to Gambia to be self-sufficient in terms of rice production. I think the only problem there was this thing was so politicized, and it was <laughs> also wanted to say yeah, it was thing. so politicized, mm. and you know there was no proper research done to see how feasible this was. Mm. Um, it it to make seemed sure that like it a mere vision. Yeah, yeah, but then it was a very great idea. Mm. Um, just that the politicization part was what um, affected everything, but it was a great idea to see how best we can be self-sufficient in terms of um, rice production because it's really sad. It, it, I, I feel bad when I, looking at the land, like you said, in the Gambia, when you take this route from um, Combo to Basse, to Basse, you see I the mean, land. A, a but very good land. Sadly, you land. see Japanese government, Taiwanese government mm. donated mm. rice to the Gambia. Mm. Mm. This is really sad. Mm. A country like the Gambia having this vast land mm. where we can grow rice. I, I, I traveled to Bansang, mm. I mean, from YBK. Yeah. When I was entering Bansang on the left-hand side, mm. I saw a big farm mm -hmm. of vegetable. Mm. I mean, I asked, who owns this farm? They said it belongs to Indians. Mm. I mean, they, and they are doing very good. Mm. Yeah, that's what they are doing. It's mm. not only that. Even even if you look at fruits, for instance, in this country, mm. mango. You go to certain parts of the country. The way mango is wasted in this country yeah. is just too much. Onions, is. everything. Mm. What is the state doing about that? Are we not going to create the right? I mean, you know, industries, for instance, mm. where these things could be. I mean, I mean, could, could be made into juice and all that. Not yeah. that is also going to create Thank employment you. opportunity. Yeah, for Yeah, sometimes, well. Genova, yeah. I say to myself, yes. I mean, we have a very good mango season, yes. and most of these mangoes are wasted at the end of the time. Mm -hmm. Why not we have maybe a big factory that mm. produces mango juice well, in four years? Well, that has been the recommendation you know? since I was going to primary school. Yeah. I so can tell we, you. we still have a problem. We yeah. have everything, but still now we cannot do. Yeah, you know? I, I think that has been the recommendation since mm. I was going mm. to school. Yeah. The fact that factories have to be put in place to make sure these things are done. <laughs> and if you look at the Gambia currently, uh, a lot of young people encourage to also study agriculture. Yeah. You know, parents at some point, if your child wants to study agriculture, you will question the child. Yo, hana farm nga buganeka. You know, this is also a big question. You know, agriculture is not something that a lot of young people are encouraged to venture into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like I said, it boils down to the problem of, I mean, our education system. Yes. You see, this is a colonial style mm. architect education system. It is brought to us, not fit for purpose now. Even those who brought this type of education system yeah. are no more using it. It's a cake to them. Mm. When you go to the West today, 
Yeah. They're thinking of how to innovate, yeah. in, you know, even in agriculture. Mm -hmm. How do we innovate in technology? A lot of areas, innovations are taking place in the West today. But then we have this type of education system. Mm -hmm. We teach our kids going to school, A, B, C, one, mm -hmm. two, three. They cram them, go from primary school to high school, university, they graduate. At the end of the day, we are not seeing that knowledge, mm -hmm. that scientific knowledge that's supposed to transform this country. It's not there. Because all what we do is to teach these kids I mean, how to gain employment, mm -hmm. how to help themselves, mm -hmm. and not how to help the society, mm -hmm. how to transform our, our de development trajectories. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is a is the main problem with this. I mean, you don't have to blame the kids at the end of the day because that is what they're introduced to. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the end of the day, I always say that uh, most of us, or all of us, have become victims of miseducation mm. and we have a duty to re-educate ourselves because at some point some of us have been de-educated mm. okay <laughs> um <laughs> the, the education that we need to transform this country is not really there and i i it also beats my imagination and i feel very sad when i realize that those that are supposed to to, to, to work on these, our experts are still continuing the same style of education. Mm. We need serious people with the expertise, with the skills, with the knowledge to sit down and study mm. our society. Mm. What do we need? What are the current realities? What are the current needs of the Gambia? Mm. Knowing that, then moving away from there, we try to tailor our education system to suit this reality. Mm -hmm. right. But I don't know if, they, if these things are not done, we will continue to find it difficult to progress as a yeah, society. Yes. The, the white collar job is really affecting us. Yes. I mean, we think. When we go to school, we graduate, we have to go to the office. Yes. I mean, so this I've, is. I've this been is talking the, about yeah. the fact that I might start a business soon, mm -hmm. you know? I mm -hmm. think business is the way forward. Mm -hmm. Business pays the bills, mm -hmm. and you get to have even yeah, surplus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I might venture into business <laughs> at some point. Moving on, I think we talked about this enough, and we hope duty bearers are listening or watching what we are discussing here today just to try to change the narrative, encourage more young people to venture into agriculture. And also we have agriculture at the University of the Gambia. Parents, allow your children to do this if this is what they want to do. That is how the narrative will change eventually. You talked about the fact that research is very important. Yeah, Ajame had the vision 2016, but the proper research was not put in place. I think the more we do research, let it be at the education system level or any other thing that we are trying to do as a country, we will move and the narrative will change eventually. Mm -hmm. I totally believe in that. So moving on, let's talk about vaccine. Biden um, announced that U.S. has donated vaccine to Zambia, Senegal, um, Niger, Niger, and to Gambia. I think the Johnson Johnson has arrived in Gambia mm -hmm. and um, the vaccine hesitancy is still here. Mm -hmm. I know I took my vaccine. Congratulations to me. Did you take your vaccine? No, I, I, I didn't take my vaccine. Did you <laughs> take your vaccine? <laughs> well, no. I will. Okay, I will. let's talk about why you, 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 you're not taking this particular... Are you waiting for a specific vaccine? Or why don't you have confidence in the vaccine? What is the problem? See, with COVID, when it comes to COVID, I mean, there has been a lot of um, conspiracy theories about it. Not necessarily that I subscribe to this conspiracy theory. But I'm also very cautious um, how to deal with COVID-19, especially when it comes to preventive measures. Okay. I'm not necessarily, I mean, disputing, I mean, researchers or scientists who produce these jabs and say, you know, these vaccines are good and they're going to prevent you and all that. But I've been following events um, as COVID unfolds. Mm. Just yesterday or two days ago, we saw what happened in Uganda. Over 800 people were injected with water and not vaccine, the COVID vaccine. They were told that this is a COVID vaccine when it was mere water that they were injected with. How true is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it happened. It happened in Uganda just two days ago. That's serious. Um, Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We've seen even in the UK where these things have been produced, or, or, I mean, there has been doubt. They themselves, the West who in fact came up with these vaccines, could not have confidence in this. Do well, Mr. M Mr. Njai, um, I, I think really the vaccine hesitancy is here, but I don't think it would be fair for us to allow you to actually talk about um, this particular vaccines that we are trying to make sure the hesitancy is out mm. because it seems, Mr. Njai, you do not agree with no, this Not vaccines. necessarily. You see, that's why I said in the beginning. I'm yeah. not trying to dispute it. Yes. I'm just telling you I'm cautious. Yes, you're cautious in taking about the, in taking but, this but, vaccine. But these I need are to be things very that have been um, tested by the WHO. These things have have been confirmed by the WHO. We saw our president, President Alma Baro, took the vaccine. All the cabinet ministers took the vaccine. So I think as a country, really, as long as the WHO is leading this particular process and saying that the vaccines are and okay This is where ahead. we have problem. This mm. is where we have problem. Because you're looking at it from that institution with what we call rhetorical authority. In science, we say science has a rhetorical authority. When people, when I tell you, Jennifer, don't drink tea um, in the morning, 
you will ask me why. When I say science proof that it is bad to drink tea in the morning, you're like, okay, you're not questioning it. It's rhetorical authority because you believe anything that is scientific is true. Now, WHO as that institution responsible, I mean, for global health, once they say that these vaccines are tested and they're, I mean, they, they're good, people can take it. But then what we are seeing, we are seeing different stories. I want to be very critical here. I don't want to easily succumb but, to But these what are the stories that are unconfirmed. But that's, this, that's the issue. No, these things are there's happening. no scientific body. Because we already have the WHO. There's no other body that has officially come out to say, this has been tested, the vaccines are not working, to dispute it on paper. No, we we, we, we have not seen that. For us, if at all it wasn't WHO, maybe people might have... I and mean, this has been but history, the vaccine this hesitancy is WHO. and people coming no, but, but up with ideas. But what I'm saying is, you see, what I'm saying is, we have seen where it was produced itself, in the UK for instance. They themselves not having confidence in these vaccines. Didn't we see that either? But... Where's, where's the proof? That's, that's, that's the part that but, we, but we are But I've just for. given you an example. I said in Uganda, water was used to inject people. But probably that is the government and Mr. the people. Mr. 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 These are jobs yeah. that we have brought in the country. Are you taking the vaccine? But, but there's Mr. no are confirmed... You are I am taking, cautious. Are you taking I am the vaccine? Okay. I'm cautious about the taking Anyway, the moving on. I think it will be unfair for us to allow Mr. Njai to actually... I'm not discrediting talk. the vaccine, yes. by the way. I have my personal views about yes. this vaccine. Which is okay, but we are trying by all means as a television... To encourage, to encourage people yes, to do it. Exactly. I mean, you we can do that. We are trying as a television the, station yes, in the to actually in the society encourage today, people uh, to go and take yes, their jabs because people. this is the only way that mm. we can prevent COVID-19. At some point, we do not have a choice mm. as long as um, these officials, especially the WHO, has come out to say that this is the vaccine, this is it. Mm. As you, I, before I took the vaccine, people told me, Jane, Abba, you will not have a child. At the end of the day, we took polio when we were young. We took other vaccines <laughs> yes, when we were young. there are little. many vaccines that exactly. are recommended so by now? the WHO why for us now? to take them. And I know you've taken the polio vaccine. Uh, when see, you were very young, you've the, taken the, the polio vaccine. I, thank God you said when I was very young. Yes. Then I did not have the physical happened. mind. And that's what I'm nothing telling you. Happened, I had no Jai. choice. I had to, you see, <laughs> what I'm saying here. Nothing happened. I, I, I totally agree yeah. that you can encourage people out there to take this vaccine. Maybe they believe in it, but I have my own reservations about these vaccines. Reservations and I need to be very clear. Are, are these reservations And I need true? to be very clear about that. At the end of the day, I'm speaking my mind. I'm not speaking QTV's sure, sure, mind. Sure, sure, sure. Do you understand? So I, I, I need to be very critical or cautious about this vaccine. And that is why I'm making it very clear. Mm. I've not taken it yet. And I'm not saying that I'm not going to take it. But I need to be convinced beyond reasonable doubt. This is, that is going to be probably a special discussion. We might not have the time to talk about exactly. all that, why, why I'm cautious about this. But then you, we can certainly encourage people to take it if they really believe in it and they want to take it. Yeah, so uh, like I said, as long as the WHO has confirmed that these vaccines are okay to take, go ahead and take it. Unless if the WHO comes out to say otherwise, because mm. they are the body when it comes to health globally. So let's go and take yes, our and vaccines to and be and able and to... Prevent Most people have taken the first dose, yes. and all that we hear is positive. I mean, exactly. at the end of the yeah, 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 they'll yeah, come yeah. and tell you, I've taken the vaccine, nothing, and nothing happened. happened yeah. Well, if they <laughs> tell you, okay, fine, <laughs> take the vaccine. I mean, nothing is going to happen to you. Take it and prevent yourself. Yes. You understand? So I don't think it's a wise idea for you just to sit like, maybe one day you will need the vaccine, and there'll be no, no vaccine. there'll be yes. vaccine when I need uh, it. Well, anyway, we are just, like I said, we are trying to convince everybody to go out and take their vaccines so that um, COVID-19 ends. And like I said, um, we are also expecting that you get to talk to people to also take the vaccine. And I'm urging you as well <laughs> to take the vaccine so that um, you protect yourself and protect um, the people around you. That is what we are urging all of you as, as, as a media house. That's what we are trying to do. Yeah. But thank you so much, Mr. Njai, for coming. It has been very, very fruitful. Mm. You know, I think it's important sometimes to agree and disagree, and mm. that is just mm. what we did right you now. You know, on this platform, yeah. we are open to your own opinion. <laughs> Obviously. This is, your, this is what you have. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, take your time, look at it, but take the vaccine. Yeah. Well, I will have to take my time before I take the vaccine. <laughs> take the but vaccine, like he, said, yeah. like he said, he's trying to um, yes. um, be cautious about it. But thank uh, exactly. you so much, yeah. Mr. Njai, for yeah. coming on this program. I know this is not going to be your last. Yeah. We will have um, other engagements. We thank really you. appreciate your coming. So viewers, like I mentioned on social issues this morning, we have QTV Leads to Relief for Community. We have Mohammed F. Jabi um, from Khadija Foundation to take us through some of the philanthropic activities that they've been doing here and there. So we will take a short break. When we come back, we will head right on to social issues. Stay tuned.
best product in town is back. QCell's MiFi router. Get the best MiFi in the country for just $2,800 and connect up to 15 users with 4G internet speeds and a long-lasting battery life. So rush now to any of our customer care locations and get the best for less while stocks last. For more info, call our customer care on 111. QCell, Senior Boss, the Gambia's quality network. We innovate, others follow. The best product in town is back. QCell's MiFi router. Get the best MiFi in the country for just $2,800 and connect up to 15 users with 4G internet speeds and a long-lasting battery life. So rush now to any of our customer care locations and get the best for less while stocks last. For more info, call our customer care on 111. QCell, Senior Boss, the Gambia's quality network. We innovate, others follow. Step into the future of television with sleek and slim design Samsung Smart TVs. Ranging in size from 32 to 75 inches and in different technology. Smart LED Crystal UHD Ultra High Definition and QLED Quantum Dot LED. Get new ways of interacting with your TV as our TVs offer an unparalleled vision adventure from the comfort of your living room. Ultra viewing angle, powerful picture quality, web browser, gallery, earthnet LAN, Wireless LAN built-in, Bluetooth, screen mirroring technology, mobile on TV mirroring, built-in voice assistance, Wi-Fi direct. Not only that, our TVs are backed with 12 months warranty and we are currently on a promotion. Contact us on 333-3217. Welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV's This Morning program. That was our newspaper review with Ms. Njai. Thank you so much for joining us on this particular platform. Moving on, we are heading right on to social issues. And today, our topic is QTV leads to relief for community. This is something that we've been achieving as a television station for so long. Yep. Whenever we feature stories, mm. we get to have people come, come on board to on board, get yeah. to support and one very constant individual mm. is Mr. Mohammed F. Jabi from Khadija Foundation. Thank you so much to what, for what you do and welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yes. yes. Thank so, you so much. First of all, we're <coughs> going to take a look at why Khadija Foundation, just this morning I was having a discussion with um, one of my colleagues and we were talking about the fact that the name is quite captivating but before we go into the activities yes. that you do, why Khadija Foundation? Thank you very much. Um, Khadija Foundation, we have, um, we have our main office in London, mm -hmm. and then it was established some many years ago. Mm -hmm. But they have branches in Kenya, they have branches in Uganda, and many other countries in West Africa. Okay. But um, I represent them here, not only in the Gambia, but I represent them here in West Africa. And we involve in a lot of activities, particularly building of mosques, about seven mosques in this country. Mm -hmm. And we have about seven madrasas, and we also have orphanages. But some to, due to some issues, uh, if you remember, I think I don't want to connect because the media is very strong. Yeah. Once you speak here, the whole world will pick it up. Yeah. We realized it didn't go well with an organization, which yeah. in fact we saw it on QTV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we also made our special uh, investigation. Findings. And we realized that a similar thing is happening in our centers. Okay. So for issue of orphanages, we totally stopped that. Okay. But we still have our branches, and our main branch is in, is in Mandina Ring. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of, particularly when you come to Ramadan, yes. sometimes 4,000 bags of rice, mm -hmm. they will send it to us to distribute in the Gambia here, okay. uh, Ramadan. And also at times, a few years ago, about okay. 150 cows that oh, we will buy amazing. and ask us to distribute so, in this so country. So, Mr. Jabi, yes, so right you. now, before we get into c the conversation in depth, I think we have to show our viewers that particular story that made your organization go up to Sare Sajo to get to do this donation. And when we come back, you did not answer my question about why the <laughs> Khadija. So when we come back, you will get to tell me why Khadija Foundation, where the name came we, from. We understood. Exactly. So yeah. let's take a look at um, this particular insert as to why Mr. Jabi is here today and when we come back we'll go into the conversation in depth. Thank you. The community of Sare Sajo village in Kian Central has been rejoicing after a new borehole was inaugurated on Wednesday. The village is approximately seven kilometers off the main highway and less than a kilometer from the border with Kasamas. 
During the inauguration, Mohamed F. Jabi, the vice chair of Khadija Foundation, explains the challenges the community was facing. The sponsors in Canada, when they saw the images on QTV, that somebody in this condition, for hundreds of years, they cannot get access to safe drinking water. The villagers we are using a donkey to draw 20 liters of water and the well is 37 meters deep. And the students also, a student girl, you saw it. The girl also is there fetching the same quantity of water. How can you compare a donkey to a human, particularly a girl child? And you want that girl child to perform. Okay, that is Khadija Foundation through Mohammed F. Jabi there mm. talking about that particular brilliant initiative in Sare Sajo. So before we go into Sare Sajo, um, I realize that my you, you're very much interested in the I word am very Khadija. interested. You know, as a Muslim, we know Khadija is the wife of Prophet Muhammad. That's why my boss, Faisal Sarman in London, he decided to name the foundation after, foundation. after our mother. Amazing. Okay. And that was why it was named after her. Mm -hmm. But I'll also tell you, um, QTV is the initiative of our programs okay. and our projects. Mm -hmm. We followed you when you featured the women at Saro. Mm -hmm. Very hard touching. Mm -hmm. We went there to help them. Mm -hmm. You also featured another one again at Lameng. Mm -hmm. That was also very touching. Mm -hmm. You went down to Pirang. Those women breaking those hard rocks mm. into aggregates and pieces. We followed you there. You also brought another one that is Pasimutu village in, in the North Bank mm -hmm. around behind uh, Farafenye. Mm -hmm. While I was going there, we made a call and we are made to understand that somebody was already going there. And we want to avoid the conflict. Okay. So we didn't. But we saw it on QTV. We went to Farafenye. We, I spent the night in Badibukera one. Mm -hmm. Then the following day, Sunday, I moved towards Pasimutu. I don't know where Pasimutu is. Mm. But I was told you have to pass Farafenye, then go to Dibakunda. You branch off on your left-hand side towards Senegal border is where we have Pasimutu. We made a call and somebody said to us that no, somebody is already going there. Mm. Then we have our plan B, that is Sarasajo. Mm. Then we take a call from Farafenye, come down to Jarashoma, come to Kolior, come to Nemakuta, and branch off then, go to the Kasama's borders. Wow. Sare, Sare Sajo is in Kabada. Mm. It's a border between Gambia and Senegal. Mm -hmm. The Gambia part is what we call Kiang, mm -hmm. but the Senegal part is what we call Kabada. Mm -hmm. It has some historical connections. Mm. Uh, basically, the belt, we call it Kabada corridors. Mm. Right from the Kiangs towards the Jara Somat between Gambia and Senegal yeah. is where we have the Kabada. But I think one thing why we followed you, mm -hmm. each time you featured the plight of people, particularly mm -hmm. women and girls and children, mm -hmm. when we go, we'll find something more than that. Okay. Because you only stopped outside, yeah. but we walk into their houses. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go emotional. Yeah. If you find after hundreds of years, mm -hmm. these people are part of us. Mm -hmm. Nobody listened to them. Mm -hmm. They never helped. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when I arrived, you know, I'm a Jahanka, mm. and we have that joking relationship with Fulas, yeah. and I can speak their dialect. Mm. Mm. So when I called the Alcalo to come, he never knew what I came for. Yes. He called the villagers. Mm -hmm. He thought because of what is going on now, political and others, they all came. And I said to them, when I saw them on the Heba Nindiam, Koburi do me together, gonna join in Heba Nindiam, on Heba Nindiam. The Alcalo was crying. Oh, that's oh, emotional. Wow. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that that's, that's part, no touching. one was there to pick that up. Yeah. yeah. So I have to use my hand mm. to put a pack on his back for Alcalo to keep quiet. Mm. Yeah. The whole villagers joined him mm. to cry. Mm. Already I knew the money was there because mm. already we spoke to them. Mm -hmm. But they thought, one of them said, uh, Mr. Javi, a lot of people will come here, but it never happens because we've taken our papers to... We don't want to get into government things, which is very also sensitive as a media. Mm. They did everything for the last hundred years for somebody to come to their aid. Mm. And they vote in all elections. Mm -hmm. They participate fully. Nobody listened to them. I said, let's see what will happen. That was on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Then I called the contractor. Mm -hmm. Monday, he picked up the money from the bank. Mm. And Tuesday, Wednesday, 
he was there mm. to start. Mm. But the most interesting thing is, hence I have joking relationship with them. Yeah. I can now be very free to say that. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the contractor pick up the, the, the tank stands, the tanks, the pipes, mm -hmm. the moment he is entering inside the village, the whole village pick up their pans, their buckets, their everything. Chanting. They send the Amari. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, General, yeah. this guy, I mean, he's I, think, I, I think he's Lato. trying to pull our legs. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Yeah, but, but that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I felt that, I felt that. And I think the emotion was that when I, when I arrived there mm. and the water came out and we looked at it, mm. I looked at the women and the children mm. and, and they looked at me and said, thank you. Yes. Then I quickly communicated to London office mm. and put on video call and they look at the people. They were more than happy. Yeah. But you can thank Kadiga Foundation, you can also thank us. But to me personally, it's QTV. You know why? Mm. We don't have to take a vehicle to go around all those regions to find to out find, what is happening yeah. there. Yes. It's like we sit on our table and say, oh, this is what is happening. We share the information. They discuss it, the governor discuss it in mm -hmm. London, and they agreed. Mm -hmm. And this one, the Hope True Close Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, they're working with Khadija Foundation, Amazing. Hope True Close Foundation. Yeah. Then hence, I represent Khadija Foundation. They can always say, Khadija Foundation, can we use you to implement this project for us? Yeah. And I promise the people of Sarasajan, in, in a month's time or so, a container will be coming. That's the third container they have been sending here. 40 foot container, all the content is charity is free. Amazing. This time, Sarah Sajo will make their first choice and the others will pay. Amazing. Yes. Mr. Mr. Jabi, yes. um, we've seen a lot of um, charitable organizations in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, wha what they portray, um, it's not what is in there. Yes. I mean, so how different is Khadija Foundation? Mm -hmm. um, that's a very good uh, question. I think it's one of the most outstanding and very conspicuous questions that you can ever ask. One of the things we'll do, we have been monitored, mm. which is key. And that's why most of the organizations don't have that. We have to give monthly report, mm. like Sarasajo now, was done last week, Wednesday, the report is already gone. They have to know, they will think with the bank to say, this amount of money has been picked. We ask them to go to Sarasajo, and they will use another person again to go to Sarasajo to see where the actually is there. But the, what they believe, I wouldn't like to go into those things because they believe the QTV always do the reports that they give. <laughs> they say once we have seen it on QTV, mm. we know it is done. Yes. Yes. That's a very big monitoring. Mm. If you don't monitor, you have a problem. Okay. Sometimes when I watch QTV and I realize some organizations have some problem, it has been there for a year. It shouldn't be a year you don't, without detecting it. Mm. A month when something went wrong with the organization, those monitorings should be able to detect the fault. Mm -hmm. They should even pinpoint it and say, here exactly, that's where the problem is. Mm. That's our main difference. Because I know whatever I do, I monitor. Okay. If I knew it can take me for 10 years, for five years, for a year, nobody check me what is doing, what I'm doing, mm. then I can do whatever I'm doing. Mm. And I think the advice is for them to have somebody that is independent from somebody who is not part of the foundation or the organization to go around and check exactly what we're doing. Okay. Apart, from, apart from water, um, uh, what other things do you provide for communities? That's right. That's very. In fact, our last mm. container, because I'm from the Nyanija area, mm. um, which is predominantly also a Fula area. Mm. We yeah. have about. This guy is surrounded by Fula. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's now touching me now. He's now touching me. The media. My wife is watching. <laughs> Madam, don't put me in trouble. Ma madam, okay, so madam, I mean, okay, I'm 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 okay, i am okay i am okay i am um, 50 mosques were given real carpets. We also have currently, when we realize that a mosque you only have in a mat, what we will do, we'll provide you with brand new carpets. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have applications now. The, the new one that is coming currently, the container that is coming, and it may arrive maybe end of this month or beginning of next month. Yeah. 
um, we have about 50 MOS that have made their applications, mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that we provide them. In fact, we have link. Our boss in, uh, in London has a link with a factory mm -hmm. in, 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 in London. You just need to know the size of your mosque, and then we will see how much that we're supposed to give you. Okay. And as I'm also asked to operate in, in Kasamas and Guinea-Bissau and Guinea-Conakry, mm -hmm. but because of, you know, some troubles around the border area, uh, we want to involve the embassies of those countries mm -hmm. here. When we have those materials, we can easily transport them to those countries. Okay. And I think this last, um, this last Ramadan, mm -hmm. the Iftar, mm -hmm. we also extended it to the North Bank of Senegal, the other side there. Okay. And it was very interesting. They really liked the help that we gave them. All right. Mm. Yes. Okay. You know what, well, we are so, happy yes, that. Yes. I mean, uh, kudos to the QTV News Department. Yes. Um, they are doing very good. Yes, All these the things editor, are coming. Yes, from exactly. The editor, so down to that's, that's a very good one. Yes. At least people are recognizing what we're doing. Yes. So it's a good one. Kudos, Mr. Ade yeah, and the Mr. crew. Yeah, Mr. Ade, shout out to you. <laughs> and then I think this is what we and do. And, and the I think television. your national, your, your international coverage yeah. have given you the lineage that was very key. Okay. Because they can sit there and they can watch and see what's happening. Sure. Immediately from here, Maybe in two days' time, they say, oh, we watch everything. Yes. I think that's very key. Yeah, that is but amazing. if the coverage is also within national only, mm. they wouldn't then like to watch it. Because this thing, the information gets to them very yes. quickly. Yes. 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 So, so this proves that at least we, uh, we are getting there as a television station, as a very young television station. Mm. We are making sure that we serve as a voice for the voiceless. And mm. when you do that, um, it shows you are there. So thumbs up to the entire news team for telling the stories Genoa, of people. There, there is something very interesting. Yeah. I, I can uh, remember Khadija foundation they provided back of bags of rice to laborers at the tipagara's end yes so i mean for this, is very, in, too. this yes. is very this is very interesting <laughs> yes. Genova. Yes. i mean those with wheelbarrows mm -hmm. i mean these are people that i mean at the end of the, the day they don't make anything they, no. you know so and giving them bags of rice and mr out. jabi why you've, do you you've answered you've, you've asked another pertinent question yes. why yeah. did you we, come up with that thank you when we looked at that always i'll be passing tipagaras and watch them and see what's actually happening and each time the assistant is coming, they will inform me almost a month earlier and said, we want to do this. We have sending you 1,000 bags. We're sending you 100 bags, 200 mm -hmm. bags. And I'll now figure out and say where exactly we should go. Mm -hmm. And I told the team members, I, this time we're going to do this with this we'll push push or wheelbarrow or whatever. And mm -hmm. someone said to me, why do you think of those people? Mm. And the funny thing is, when we arrive, we pack all the rice at Tibagaras. Somebody was passing, and they said, they have been in the mall. Do they not deserve it? Mm. They do. These are people who deserve. And remember, in fact, we went in. You have Gambians there. Mm -hmm. You have Senegalese there. Mm. You have Guinea-Bissau people there. You have Guinea-Conakry there. Mm. Even people from Mauritania. You'll be yeah. surprised. They told me where they are from. The list, mm. which country they are from, and they have their families here with them. Yes. And they're doing wonders in their villages. Mm. That's why when I had the last program, they're saying. The engagement of the youth, what we can do. But each time you want to talk about that, <laughs> it also always surface. People say, Oh, why are you asking me to go and do this? But they're doing wonders in their homes. Yes. You'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. Their families' entire life in their con various countries depend entirely on them. On them. Sure, yes, sure, absolutely. Sure, I mean. sure. Some of them, a day is $2,000. Mm -hmm. Some of them, $2,500. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, some of them, $1,000. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by 30 mm -hmm. if they are healthy. Well, that's At least. That They're doing a lot for their yeah, community. Yeah, that's true. And I think you pinpoint something, yes. Mm -hmm. How do, am I able to? I think sometimes, sometimes wisdom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just sit down and say, who should I help? Mm -hmm. It just come to me and said, we're supposed to go to Tipegarat and go and meet these people. Okay, that, it was that was very a very good It one. was mm -hmm. outstanding. Yes. And we also looked at, for example, when we, um, we went to some of the communities around the Busumbala ends, and it's a new settlement there, no, most of them, let's say 90 percent of them, come from the neighboring countries. Mm. They here, they are based here. When I went to them, 30 percent of them were crying okay. that people can come to come and remember them. Okay. That was an outstanding help, also as well. All right, I that's felt good. that. Yeah. And QTV also featured that. All mm. right. So due to time constraints, quickly, I think I have a question before you leave. I think we have a few minutes to go. Um, the health sector in the Gambia is not looking good. 
So as Khadija Foundation, is this uh, a sector that you are looking forward to helping as well? Because sometimes we, we, we've heard individuals talking about the lack of gloves and the lack of very essential uh, materials at, mm. at, the, at our public hospitals. So mm. are you looking forward to supporting you, in that you, area? You have a very good point. In fact, what we have planned now, in our mandinaring center, we created and then we are deciding to build a health center there. Amazing. And with that one, we'll be having expert of various areas, various areas of human health. Mm. Uh, and they will be coming and spend at least two or three weeks there and they will go. Okay. In fact, in each of our these containers, sometimes we have 200 wheelchairs. Oh. And, and what walking sticks. Okay. We do have them and give it to the health centers. Well, but I think this intervention is very important. Yeah, I think we want to build it ourselves mm -hmm. and take care of it and put our own doctors there. And of course, if the employment is here, they'll pick them from here. Or the okay. expert will be coming time to time on a monthly basis to come and help. Yeah, I think that's very good. Khadija, and when these where, experts where, come, they yes. can eventually train our exactly. homegrown doctors. Yes. So where is your office? Where it's um, in Sukuta, Medina. Medina, Yeah, okay. in Sukuta, okay. Medina. P.O. Box. Okay. Because I'm hearing Italian. something like Mandinaring. Yeah, Man yeah Mandinaring yeah. is the headquarters. And okay. I'm not far but from Mandinaring. Okay. You can see so, you can, so what you plan to do is yes. when he has a fuller wife, oh, you the, can pop back. Like, okay, yes. <laughs> final exactly. words from you, Mr. Javi. No, we would like to thank you very much. Uh, and of course, we would like to thank the people, the, the community people, Sarasadio and all others, yeah. the way actually that they have received us. And we will continue to help and we'll talk to them, our colleagues, and of mm. course our friends, our people, our partners, um, particularly those of the Hub True Clubs in, in Canada, and those are of course Khadija Foundation in London. Yeah. Mm. We would like to appeal to them. We have 20 more applications for boreholes, okay. and we hope they will sit down and discuss it, and I think the Board of Governors in Canada will approve it and will come back here and say, the work is done. All right. Thank, thank you, you so thank much, you Mr. Coming. Jab. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Jab, I think you deserve an award. <laughs> oh, you thank you. really you. deserve yeah. an award thank for the you. work that thank you, you do. Very much. Thank and you. thank you so much for partnering with QTV. I'll thank call you. this a partnership. Mm. And of to course. the QTV newsroom as well, keep telling stories. Yes, Let us exactly. keep telling you stories. Really you never know who is going to benefit from it. Somebody is listening. Somebody is listening. Somebody is watching. So thumbs up to the news team. All our programs is QTV initiative. Amazing. And I am surprised that he follows Weltari. Oh, he follows Weltari. Okay. Because hala wami don't nani. Andi net oko andi net oko ko urtama wek de ko du wani hala munga na 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 this shows that he's planning a wise thing. This flower thing is coming. Thank you so much. 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 Viewers, that is Mr. Javi. Like I said, he deserves an award. So we're looking forward to him receiving an award because he is doing extremely well for our communities. So moving on, we will take a look at the Keeping Fit segment. Like I said, So now we have to hit the gym. We need to this. actually reduce the fat. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. When we come back, um, we will take a look at um, keeping fit segment. Mm. We'll be back. Hello, everybody. This is QCT Jill. I'm Mohamed Jibangua. I have my beautiful lady here. Guys, are you ready? So let's do it. Let's move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep it again. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We squat, you get it? One, you get it? Let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See? You go. One, two, three, four, squat. Then go. One, two, three, four, squat. Up, go. One, two, three, four, squat. Keep going. One, two, three, four, squat. Let's go. One, two, three, four, squat. We go. One, two, three, four, squat. Keep it down. Good. Relax yourself. Move the legs. 
Move the hips, let me shine. Good. Move it, girls. Aha! This is what we are talking about. This is Kill City. Good. Ready? Five, give it a go. Let's go, right. Go. Move the hips. Four, go. Five. Give me five, yeah, left. Go. Two. Three. Four. Five. Thank you. Give me there. Good. Go, push it there. Nice one. Three, go. Four. Five, give me there. One. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Good one. Go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Keep it down. Enjoy the beat, yeah? Good. What you are doing? Move the hips now. Enjoy the beat. Good. Give me the hips. Same thing again. Are you good there? Go. Let's go. Push it there. Three. Four. Five. Over there. Push it there. One. One. Good one. Two. Three. Four. Five. One W. Go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. One more. Two. Keep it there. Enjoy the beat, guys. Are you okay? Are you okay? Let me hear you say yeah. Woo! Enjoy the beat. Wow. Wow. Okay, push it there. We go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bounce it there. Hips there. Bring it there. Keep the head up. Move it there. Good one. Push it there again. Give me two. One, two, three, four. Right there. One, two, three, four. Right there. Let me try. Get it down. There. Yeah, bring it down. All right. Again, one more time. Okay. Keep it down. Okay, viewers. This is what we have for you this morning. Keep exercising health as well. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you all. Whoa. Welcome back, viewers. That was the Keeping Fit segment. Mbaharbim Bukula. Harbim Bukun, ma. This time around, I'm plan. Small boy, ma. Okay. Normally, I'm on a tobacco you run, but I'm on a Why this year? Mm. I planned it so well. well. Okay, but I think we should hit the gym anyway. Exactly. Just Let to make sure, ne? Because funny, if you have a lanyol. Let's do it this weekend. We should do it this weekend, yes. right? I think we should do it together, just to show people that yes. we have the let's, motivation. Let's do it we this will do weekend. that. I think we've been promising for so long. Exactly. But this this weekend, we would we would take it up Definitely. and get to show you the pictures well, just to yeah, prove you've it. Yeah, you've seen some of the. Uh, things that they were doing. Yeah. This is very important. Mm -hmm. um, always, Damakode mentioned on this program, uh, to exercise is important. important. Every day do something. You yeah. know, in our 
this life today, every day we wake up and run. Yes. In the morning, if mm -hmm. you wake up, you're struggling to come to work. Yes. So you won't have the time to do something. Yes. Well, at least the weekend, you know? Yeah. Go do you something. take it up yeah. and do I mean. something. And Q City Gym is open for mm. all of you guys to get to join mm. and stay healthy, stay fit. It mm. just doesn't mean that you go to the gym to lose weight, but mm. just to stay healthy exactly. generally. Yeah. So I think it is important. Internal fitness, very yes, important. Very mental health. Yes, yes. exactly. And so it puts you in shape. I mean, you yeah. will always be in shape. You know, it's very important for you to get something. I mean, it's better than nothing. Better than nothing. So for the first time, we're introducing a new segment on this program called Diaspora Voices. I've been talking about it for so long. Mm. It's one of those segments that I'm extremely excited about because it gives us an opportunity as a mm. program to get to show what people outside of the Gambia are doing, people in the diaspora. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's exciting. Exactly. And if you look at it, most of our people are living outside. Yes. I mean, the Gambia... Um, now we are connected, mm -hmm. so it's important for us to know what's up out there too. Yeah. I mean, yes. And looking so. at how high remittances mm, are, exactly. it is important that mm, we give that the people in the diaspora a chance to also show what they're up to and to give an mm. opportunity to Gambians, they're, 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 they're of course relatives here, to get to see what they're up to as Absolutely. well. They're doing so well. Thumbs yeah. up to people in the diaspora. Exactly. Our remittances are so high yes. looking at our yes. GDP. Yes. When you look at it, I mean, uh, most of the people here depend on diaspora. Exactly. I mean, so it's important for us to show these people yeah. what their people are going through. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, Jane, about not easy. to be out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you will never know, maybe from for a man who've never traveled, he'll mm -hmm. be sitting here and say, ah, funny. Wow. Well, but it's not like mm -hmm. that. It's not the way you look at exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, sometimes you have to go through a lot yeah. before they you have send their own the challenges. money here. Yes. Yeah. So we will take a look yeah. at it, Jenna. So for the first time, we're taking a look at Diaspora Voices. And in this particular video, we're taking a look at how Gambians celebrated it in the USA. And this video is brought to us by Awanjai. Let's take a look at that. Salam here in Campbellton, Atlanta, Georgia. Eid Mubarak, everyone. As you all know, today is Eid al Adha, a religious holiday when millions of Muslims gather around the world and pray in congregation. Eid al Adha is a religious holiday celebrated in the 12th month of the Islamic lunar calendar. <laughs> Most Muslims around the world performed their Eid prayer in 2020 at home to apply safety measures. Due to coronavirus restrictions last year, community members had to pray at home. I'm very excited because if you think about it, it's been like more than a year that you haven't seen so many people. Many people out here are fortunate to be here to pray together for we did not have that opportunity last year. You know, say more I asked a few people about their favorite thing on Eid Day and they are thrilled about the festivities of the holiday. My name is Aminata Tunkara, and my favorite thing about E is getting your hand done, partying, eating lamb, and all that. My name is Fatima, and my favorite thing about E is the fact that all Muslims are getting together to celebrate one thing at the same day. My name is Famata Tunkara, and my favorite thing about E is the family, friends, and the food. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Umu Drame. So excited for today. I'm inviting my friends over to my house. We're doing some barbecue, it's some great. lamb chops, you know. What's on the chair? And she fast from me in the month of Ramadan. What happened with her father? And she protected and safeguarded her private parts by staying away. Millions of Muslims worldwide gather with family on this day to celebrate, give gifts, charity, and commemorate the courageous act of Prophet Ibrahim. Reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, I am.
that was Awanjai reporting from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. Exciting. Mm. Those lamb chops look good. Though. Well, very good. I Our sea you know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Genova, you see, it's important. You know, Gambians will always be Gambians. I mean, if we are outside, you know, whenever we all meet in, mm. uh, at one place, I mean, we share the love, you know, we come together. I mean, we are Gambians. Mm. When we are out, we are mm. One thing. Uh, people miss when they are out there is, I mean, to socialize, yeah. you know. Uh, out there, it's different the way we celebrate our Eid al in yeah. the Gambia. So it's important, it's good to see these people, yeah. you know, coming together and sharing, inviting friends yeah. and eating lamb and doing yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's a beautiful. chance for them to come together because mm. when you live outside, when I talk to people who live outside of the Gambia, mm. they, talk to, they talk about how lonely they are. Yes, so it's different. As such, you know, my, my, my brother, I mean, when it's to basket, yeah. he always call. I mean, how are you people yeah. doing here? Yeah. I mean, uh, you and mom, Fee, we are sitting here. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. boring. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, I think as time goes on too, the trend will change there yeah. because you've seen what is happening. Yeah. I mean, in previous years, this has not been happening. So now it is happening. Yeah. So I know it will change. Yeah, and, and they talked about the COVID-19 as well and mm. how it has affected them last mm. year. Mm. So at least this time they have a chance to actually pray together mm. and all of that. So I think um, that's important. So like I said, this we are bringing you Diaspora Voices for the first time and we will make sure to mm. bring it as exactly. much as we can on because it's program. important mm. to also show you guys what people in the USA, in Germany, and other countries are also up to. Mm. So next up, we have the entertainment segment by Skeng Man. Skeng Man. Man is <laughs> ugly. Yes. So we will take a, a short break. When we come back, we will take a look at Click. We'll be back. Welcome back. Like I said, we are joined by Skeng Man Sweezy. How's your eat? A nice outfit, by the way. Uh, thank you very much, Geneva Mbalde. Uh, good morning, viewers. I'm Skengman Sweezy. And then, welcome to another episode of This Morning Show that comes your way from Monday to Thursday. We took it off. We have to relax and have fun doing the eat and as well. And eat a lot of meat. Well, we're <laughs> <back>. <laughs> Are we in meat? You know, yes. since we started this yes. program, I've never asked this guy, yeah. what's the meaning of that Skengman Sweezy? <laughs> 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 what, what is no, the meaning? I'm not, I, I don't want to, I don't want to emphasize into it because it doesn't really, you know, it's something that is, you know, really It's private. Let's exactly, leave it under you know. the carpet. Exactly, under the carpet. <laughs> leave it so, under the carpet. Yeah, so this morning, we have a guest in the studio with yeah. us. We have an important guest for that matter. Yeah. But I'm not going to introduce her. We're just going to watch the clip. And then when we come back, then we get to speak to the guest. Yeah, um, that's, that's the video. We have an award-winning actress in the studio with us today. Mm. Miriam, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure, actually. <laughs> and congrats for winning the award, actually. Thank so, you. So um, tell us a bit about you, Mariam. What are you doing, and who are you, actually? Well, I don't think I'm new to the Gambian people anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they basically know who I am, what mm. I do, uh, if I'm right. Mm. I am an actress, an award-winning actress, and um, I'm a radio host. I'm also an activist for women and girls' rights. Okay. Yes, so I was born and raised here in the Gambia, in Bekama, 
and I still live at Beckham. And this surprises a lot of people because yeah. anyone who knows me knows that I was born and raised in Beckham. I haven't mm -hmm. moved out ever since. And then I started acting when I was 12, mm -hmm. like any regular mm -hmm. actress from school, drama clubs, being very active in different organizations like Lend a Hand Society, Children mm -hmm. Against AIDS. I was a peer health educator as well. And, um, you know, my radio career started off from Brikama FMB, where we had our youth show. I used to participate also on International Children's Day of Broadcasting, yeah. you know. But then I started really winning um, awards and certificates and recognition in 2004 okay. from different um, competitions that I used to participate on, mm -hmm. mainly YMCA, because those days YMCA used to run most of the competitions that used to happen in this country. Yeah. And um, grade me in a state theater in high school, news rat, um, until today, 2013, I got my first international recognition from my first movie called The Hand of Fate, mm -hmm. which was a movie also centered around child marriage. Mm -hmm. And I was nominated for the role that I acted on. Mm -hmm. And that was my first um, nomination for the African Oscars. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I think there's room to improve and mm -hmm. do more. Yeah. So I joined the Ibunjan Theater where I am currently which is the only theater we have in the Gambia owned by Auntie Janet Bajaniong. Um, I became a member of the theater. Mm -hmm. I did most of my studies there because mm -hmm. we had a six months course since exactly. we don't have a performing <laughs> arts school. And here I am today, I won two international awards. Yeah, you started acting, you said, when you were at the age of 12, right? Yes. So what really got you into acting? I don't even know, mm -hmm. really. <laughs> was it a passion or what? Yeah. Because I was very shy, I was mm. very quiet, but um, I had a headmistress at that time because I went to a Catholic school mm. called Presentation. Yes. It was the best school in Bekama at that time. And every year before we close for Christmas holiday, we usually do performances and invite our families. So out of the blue, the headmistress decided to select me to perform on one of the plays. And I thought, no, nah, this is not for me mm. because I'm too shy, I'm too quiet. But I did it, it was a minor role from there. She gave me a lead role. And then I fell in love with acting from there because mm. I was able to see the relevance of it that, oh, this is actually storytelling. This is actually very educational. Mm. And then I was like, okay, now I'm going to join all these relevant organizations to improve my public speaking skill and my self-confidence mm. and forge ahead with this acting career because I, I fell in love with it. Yeah, um, 2013, you were nominated for the o African Oscar Award. Yes. Now, how, was, how was the feeling like being nominated for the first time I'll and it's African, you have other actresses and actors mm -hmm. in the industry as well. Yeah. But you were nominated from the Gambia. What was the feeling like actually? I was amazed. I'm like, okay, this, mm -hmm. this looks good. I didn't yeah. expect it at all, but yeah. I was really happy. I was excited for myself. And I realized that, okay, if my country people don't recognize my potential, it looks like people out there see what I'm doing and they know the relevance. Mm -hmm. And I was really honored to be recognized at that early age. Yeah, and then you, you won the Hollywood actress not long ago. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about that. Because um, it's something that really Gambian people mm -hmm. are nominated for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've been nominated. It's a pleasure, actually. Yes. We're proud of you. Yeah. But tell us a bit. What was the feeling like? Mm -hmm. you, you winning the award, actually. So I act, the recent movie that I acted on is called Baby. That's the video people just watched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a short movie on child marriage. It was produced by Rebel. Mm -hmm. And I was invited on the project by the director himself, Usman Jaji, who I knew way back. We used to work together. And Oz mm -hmm. himself is an amazing actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, he approached me to be the lead actress on the movie and also to do production management through my company called Studio 411, where I am highly recommended for production management work. Yeah. So um, it was hectic because anyone who knows about production management, you will know it's a very demanding work. work. Yeah. At the same time, being given a sensitive role to act was very, very challenging. But alhamdulillah, I took it up. I love challenges. Mm -hmm. It came out great. I was able to deliver on my acting side on, on production management. So when the movie finished, it's supposed to be normal. I don't think Gambians know this, but it's supposed to be normal. When you produce a movie and you screen it in your country, the next step is for you to 
um, have it distributed to film festivals, yeah. to mm -hmm. awards, yeah. so that your movie would be seen, so that the work that you have done mm -hmm. would not just go in vain. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what the Mbibit um, team did. They submitted the movie to these festivals, including the US Hollywood Golden Film Award, which I won, yeah. and the Romania um, Film Festival uh, for Best Actress, which was also a competition. Yeah. So uh, that is really the, the process. So um, Rebel submitted the movies, it was screened, there those people don't know me they have never met me mm. they only exactly. saw my performance yeah. from the movie yeah. and they thought I deserve the awards and I won. Bebet itself has won so many um, I awards say, as yeah. well. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, quickly mm -hmm. I want to I want to ask a question. Yes. You being an award winner mm -hmm. from the Gambia mm -hmm. what 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 role are you putting in place to make sure Gambia because we don't have an industry at all we don't have mm -hmm. a movie industry we don't even have a movie scene. Yes. We hardly seen people act like act, act, act in movies and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But all we see they do is acting dramas, just short dramas and other stuff. Yeah. But we don't have a movie industry. Mm -hmm. And people should learn from you guys because mm -hmm. you are you 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 been the the fir the first Gambian mm -hmm. to win an award mm -hmm. outside the Gambia, a movie award actually. Yeah. So what are you putting in place to make sure mm -hmm. you also inspired other people that want to go in for acting? Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, the likes of Fatim, uh, Fatima Jabi, who is now the first lady of Sierra Leone, sure, yeah. she was doing very well when she was here. Uh, Miro Boy was mm -hmm. one of the movies she produced. Mm -hmm. it, it, it called out so many actors mm -hmm. from the Gambia and Nigeria, and that movie also won so many awards. Mm -hmm. That movie was also nominated for the African Oscar mm -hmm. during my time as well, around 2013. Mm -hmm. And Fatim herself ha has won a couple of awards as a Gambian. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of Gambians who are doing well individually, um, pushing their movie, their careers outside the Gambia. But we don't have the force from the government to support to make this even easier. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Now, individually, obviously, we have movies that are winning from Gambia. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Gifts from Babylon was one of the movies that I worked on also yeah. as production manager. And currently, it is one of the most recognized movies outside the Gambia. It's a movie on migration. And all the cast are from the Gambia. Mm -hmm. the, lights, uh, the likes of Christopher Tijan Smith, yeah. you know, uh, Uncle Tijan. I, wa I, I watched, the, I watched yeah, it, actually. You watched it. It's and really that's nice. A, and that's a good movie. It was produced by State of Mike mm -hmm. and a couple of um, Dutch filmmakers mm -hmm. like Bass. And I was the production manager. I was there throughout from the beginning till the end. We saw the work that we put in it. And that movie is winning awards. That means we have the potential. And the next project that I worked on was also Mbibit, and it's also winning awards. Hand of Fate also was a Gambian movie produced and directed by Gambian, State of Mike, Ibrahim Sise, myself, and all the cast who were there. Mm -hmm. So um, movies are actually being recognized if they put in the work and the push that yeah. it needs. Yeah. So all I would encourage people out there is don't joke with your job because your job is what identifies you, mm -hmm. whether you can do this or not. No, yeah, exactly. If you rush your projects, you come. I'm sometimes surprised how people shoot a movie within two weeks, three weeks, and it's done and you say you're going to screen it. I'm not coming to that screening because you didn't put in the end of time and work that yeah. it needs for it to come out great. Work on your storyline, on your direction, and your cast and make it great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so moving on, yeah. Buba, before you move, let's talk about uh, the accessibility of these movies. Because sometimes you talk to certain individuals about Gambian movies, yes. they're like, it's not accessible. Where can I get it? Where can I see it? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. I think if people, Gambians, at mm -hmm. some point are get to see these movies, maybe yeah. they will get to have interest in it. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, you talked about something that is very important. Yeah. The fact that if Gambia does not recognize you, mm -hmm you will be recognized internationally. Outside, exactly. I think that is quite sad. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. very sad. Yes. It's very sad because w after winning these awards, people have been like, oh, can your daughter act in? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you, what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been acting all my life, but you've been seeing my post on social media. You don't come and support. You don't care. You, exactly. know, you don't come to the theater. We have performances yeah. at the theater all the time. And people don't value these things. Mm -hmm. They think we are joking. They think we are clowns. You know, if I introduce myself as an actress before, people be like, oh, and what else do you do? Yeah. Because for them, it's not it's a not job. Mm. It's a profession like any other profession. Uh, acting suits 
should pay your bills. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not for it's us not, here. Not in the Gambia. Because our, our jobs are not recognized and our jobs are not protected, even on the government level. Mm. I invited the minister to my ear unveiling our award ceremony. Unfortunately, he didn't come. They said he, he had an engagement. Yeah. But at least you could have sent a Somebody rep representative. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw the first lady. The first yeah. lady came. Yeah. I dedicated one of the awards to her, and I appreciate her support. Mm -hmm. A minister of youth and sports, he couldn't come, but he sent a representative. Yeah. Mr. Hassum Sisa was there, mm. but I was disappointed with the minister that he didn't come, he didn't send a representative. Like, how serious are you with the work that we are doing? Mm -hmm. You are our minister. Okay, which minister no, is that? Minister of uh, Tourism and Culture. And culture. It's, yeah. good, it's good she's yeah, saying it on this know. platform, actually. Yeah, it's, it's not an attack. I'm yeah. just saying, at least even if he can't come, mm. let him send a representative. This would show that at least the ministry is interested in what we do. Mm. Mm. This is the first time we're having a Gambian movie being recognized outside. Mm -hmm. on such a big platform and an individual for that matter winning the award as well mm -hmm. and uh, you know at least it would have been beautiful to have his presence there yeah. to encourage us and to support and see the work that we're doing yes. but nonetheless accessibility to the movies um, in the Gambia yes usually depends on the production team mm -hmm. and how long they are circulating their movies on on festivals like with baby right now it's not accessible because it's on film festivals and film awards mm -hmm. now if your movie become too accessible online film festivals and and awards will not accept your movie okay. because already the public has access to oh. it oh. Oh. so you have to wait until you get what you want okay. if you are targeting certain awards mm -hmm. that um certain festivals mm -hmm. you have to wait until you make your tours round mm -hmm. then you can now release the movie online or on platforms where it will be accessible to public yeah. views mm -hmm. and this is also normal even on professional level in hollywood or anywhere else okay. you know it would take some time before the movie is accessible unless you know uh, the movie is currently streaming on big platforms mm -hmm. like Netflix and yeah, stuff like yeah. that mm -hmm. but gradually I think we would get there um, hand of fate came out I think in 2013 and it became accessible to the public around 2019 okay. or so yeah, so, so um, it's um, a yeah. normal thing it's a normal process yeah. 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 so Ma Mariama yes. um, congratulations mm, on your you. award so what next for Mariama yeah and and towards that quickly as well yes um, what work is the NCSC putting in to make sure you guys have been recognized or supporting the movie industry as well? Mm -hmm. And secondly, your final words to your fans out there. All to right. just wrap so it all, all next that. for me is to uh, continue working hard, to continue educating myself, mm -hmm. build my talent, build my craft, because I keep telling people, don't allow awards or the noise to deem your efforts mm -hmm. with what you want to do. This is the time I should be working even harder. So yeah. I'm on that level. I'm looking forward to working on movies that would take Gambia on Netflix, to see Gambia on the Oscars Amazing. and bigger platforms, inshallah. Yeah. Mm. So this is just a baby step towards my career for me. And uh, on the level of NCAC, I would say Mr. Hasim Sise has been very open uh, to all of us. He opened his doors mm -hmm. and office to us very at all supportive. times. Mm -hmm. He's very supportive. But we will still need them to do more. Um, you know, create platforms that would make our work easier and also you know, to put in place structures that will also help our movies, our work recognized on international platforms. Yeah. I know the likes of uh, Shia Omar has been representing us on so many platforms. Bro, we want to know what you're doing there. What are you telling those people? How are you really lobbying for us? Because mm. we know what we are going through. We have different organizations, yes. the guilds, the, the SAC, and all of that, the theater union. Mm -hmm. I think they should be representing us since they speak for us. Let them lobby for us because they know what we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to collaborate more to make the performing art of the Gambia stand stronger and become even more effective in this country but for the next generation. Okay. Mm. Mariana, yeah, just um, three <coughs> tips before you leave mm -hmm. for any, uh, any young person out there watching and wants to be in your shoes. Just quickly, three tips. Be dedicated, be disciplined, be hardworking, and be ready to face challenges at all times. 
nothing comes easy. Okay. I've been getting so many approaches from young people who want to become actors. When I tell them where I started from, they don't want to start from no. the bottom. <laughs> All of a sudden, no. you want to be on a, get up there. <laughs> yeah. on a movie. Exactly, yeah. I started from my school drama club. So yeah. go back to your school drama club if you're still in school. Come to Ibundian Theater, see what we do, and also try to join. Because really, you need to take the baby steps before you climb the ladder. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was that was okay. in the studio. Yeah. Congratulations for Thank the award. You. Gambia is proud of you. Seriously, we're Thank proud you of so you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Now it was Tabaski. Yeah. Trust it. It was it was Tabaski, and you know every year it's a culture that QCT mm -hmm. normally have. We we always have um, kids at QCT. We organize shows for them for them to go out and have fun as well. Mm -hmm. But this year it was really different. Okay. It was a different vibe at QCT at all. So um. We just watch this clip and when we come back we had a discussion. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a cute boy, I'm a girl on the beach. She call me Mr. Electrician. I come to my views in the back. I'm moving my hand. I'm saying bye bye for today till I come your way next week. And Thank it was you. an interesting discussion with Mariam yeah. in the studio. And then I want to say Eid Mubarak to everybody and happy Tabaski to everybody at home as well. Happy Tabaski to my family. We're going to go the weekend Tabaski. Exactly. It's the weekend Tabaski. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, due to time constraints, Balda, I yes. think we have to wrap up as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. So, this is all we have for you in this edition of QTV's This Morning Program. Don't forget to connect with QTV on our different social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube to just stay connected with what QTV has to offer. And do not forget that you can sponsor this Sponsors. particular program. Your products can yes. be displayed right yes. here. Mm. Call our marketing team, get to negotiate with them. The prizes are not expensive exactly. and get to join our team. So up next, we have Midday News by Ajibin Tudrame. Thank you so much for joining us. See you on Monday. Bye for now.